welcome to Fair and Square, a weekly program where we square up and square with top public personalities. Our guest today is Justice Kuldeep Singh, former judge of the Supreme Court of India and chairman of the Delimitation Commission. Welcome to the show, Justice Kuldeep Singh. Thank you, thank you. Uh, two years from now, on January 1, Justice Kuldeep Singh, you'll be completing uh, 80 years. It has been a long uh, journey. You were a lawyer, you were a judge, a social activist. And uh, I think the last uh, assignment was of a cartographer, you know, since you were yes, uh, yes, looking yes. after the delimitation. Delimitation, yes. So what are the most interesting experience uh, in these uh, 80 years? From my personal point of view was my working in the Supreme Court as a judge and especially uh, dealing with um, the uh, environment protection cases. It was a challenging job, primarily Controlling pollution in the environment field is uh, state's duty. It's the government. We have environment protection department, and we, but we all know that, that you know that is a neglected that field all over. Even the pollution control boards, which are set up, they are toothless. They are useless. They are nothing. So therefore, finally, the Supreme Court took over, and I took very active part in um, in adjudicating this environmental, environmental law jurisprudence. Yeah. But, but so far as interesting from the public point of view is concerned, that was the delimitation. The, the last assignment. The, the last assignment. I was uh, chairman of the delimitation. Of course, the chief election commissioner, I mean, he was one of the members. And the second member used to be whichever state we would do the work, the uh, state election uh, commissioner there, he would be our third member. So there it was interesting, I say interesting, because we were primarily concerned with the politicians throughout. Absolutely. And uh, because in this country the politicians think that this, their constituency is their ancestral property. They don't want to have any change into it. Whichever pocket supports them, they don't want to lose that pocket. Whichever pocket is against them, they would always pester us, please deduct it, Absolutely. Take, take, take it away. We're going to, we're going to talk about that, but uh, <laughs> let me uh, take you back to uh, the time when uh, you were in uh, Chandigarh. Yeah. This is thodi there was the advocate general we read. I was there, advocate general. You know, Sujit Singh Banala, the chief minister, she was there? No, no, no. When uh, uh, Siddharth Shankar Ray was uh, uh, governor, and it was governor's rule. Achha. Oh, kisna the experience hiya? That was a very short experience because I was made Advocate General in um, May, Ji. May 1987, and I demitted office in um, I think August 87. Only three months, not much, but it was a very trying uh, period. Uh, reason being the this um, insurgency in Punjab, though uh, not much could be done, but we were always on our toes here, there, and all sorts of things. We set up a special prosecuting agency, I still remember. But I could not do much because May I was appointed, High Court, for, high court was closed mostly for one month or five weeks. And by the time uh, the, the High Court reopened and I could organize something, I was appointed additional Solicitor General in Delhi. Absolutely. And then you uh, moved to Delhi as the additional Solicitor General. I had to, to move to Delhi as the additional Solicitor General. And when General. soon after that you became a judge of the I, Supreme Court. No, I was additional Solicitor General for a year and a half. I became judge of the Supreme Court uh, in December uh, 88. And now, that was a very rare honor because normally for a lawyer, normally they become judges of the High Courts and then they are elevated. There is a provision under the Constitution for direct elevation to the Supreme Court. I was the fourth, I think, lawyer, member of the bar. At that time, I was a member of the Supreme Court Bar Association. And probably I was the first from the Supreme Court Bar Association to be uh, appointed direct to the... It must have been a very difficult uh, decision because, uh, you know, as a lawyer, uh, lawyers make big money, successful lawyers, and you were correct, making a correct, lot of money. And correct. suddenly, from big money, it was a jump to the big status. I had, that didn't make, uh, didn't, didn't bother me much because I had already taken a decision to, I mean, stop my practice where I accepted additional solicitor general, general chip in Delhi. But though it was, uh, I could partly practice, but then after all, 
uh, it's not, I don't think that um, it's a call to do some service uh, to the country through judiciary. And normally, uh, in the atmosphere where I was uh, trained and educated in England, uh, you, you never say no when you are offered Absolutely. Uh, now, now uh, judgeship. did the judgeship uh, curb your personal uh, lifestyle? You like to mix up with yeah, friends, you enjoyed an occasional drink in the evening. So could you do all that as a judge? Yes, I did. Chief Justice Potek, he called me once after seven, eight days. He said, Kuldeep, we know that you like your drink. But then, uh, now you are a Supreme Court judge. You have to be very careful. You can't drink in public and all here and there. This is our convention here. I thought for a while, and um, I then said that, look, chief, I have been drinking, and all those friends with whom I sit and drink and enjoy my drink in the evening, they are still there. No, I can't stop drinking with them. <laughs> I'll have to. <laughs> it's not so. But I can assure you one thing, that I will never give you a complaint. Right. Okay. Rather, <laughs> it was the other way around. After some time, after two, three weeks or a month, all Supreme Court judges who were drinking at their homes, not drinking, they all started drinking with me and there was nothing. It's uh, okay, you can't stop. Now, uh, when we are talking about uh, big money which the lawyers make, do you think there is a need to regulate the money that the lawyers make? As of now, a lot of, lot of it is unaccounted for I and mean, they don't pay taxes. Uh, should something be done about it? I, I, I would not comment. I do not know whether they pay taxes or not. I assume that all those good lawyers who are earning such huge lot of money, they must be paying taxes. But then I certainly agree with you. This is not my opinion. It is the opinion of so many eminent elite, elitists like you and others. They think that um, the, the lawyers are charging very exorbitant. Now take for example in Supreme Court, there are top 10, 15 lawyers who can charge from 3 lakhs to 20 lakhs per sitting, per hearing. You appear in a, there are two days in the Supreme Court, Fridays and Mondays, which are called the special leave petition days. There are 70, 80 cases before different benches fixed each. So it takes one minute or three minutes, never more than five minutes. So a lawyer may not be called upon sometime. Judge may dismiss it. There's nothing in your case. Findings affect all the court. He may dismiss it. But then... The, the lawyer charges. Maybe, maybe they should be adopting some of these slum policies that we have, each one of them. <laughs> I don't know what, something will have to be done. Either the um, uh, lawyers organization, these bar council, etc., they'll themselves, disciplinary bodies, they may themselves control or something will have to be done. I think they will do it voluntarily. And due course. Here we'll take a short break. When we return, we'll continue our conversation with Justice Kuldeep Singh, former judge of the Supreme Court of India. आप खाने को सिर्फ टेस्टी ही नहीं बनाए और भी हेल्दी विद जैतून तारा कुकिंग ऑयल जो एसिडिटी शुगर ब्लड प्रेशर कैंसर और हार्ट की बीमारियों को कंट्रोल में रखता है साथ ही वाइटैलिटी और यूथफुलनेस को बढ़ाता है जैतून तारा कुकिंग ऑयल खाओ जैतून तारा देखो तंदुरुस्ती का नजारा इट हैज बीन अ लॉन्ग लॉन्ग वेट फॉर रुचिकास फ्रेंड्स एंड फैमिली द अथॉरिटीज क्लेम दैट दे टेकिंग द नेसेसरी स्टेप्स but are they really enough? Users must take essential safeguards. Milk fed his plans to hike the price of Veka milk by rupee 1 per litre. This is Gupta Singh Chinda, Sanjay Mehta, Pawan Tiwari, Day and Night News, Bantra, Mohali, Chandigarh. Welcome back. We are in conversation with Justice Kuldeep Singh, former judge of the Supreme Court of India. Justice Kuldeep Singh, uh, now when uh, you were the judge of the Supreme Court, you right. took some hard decisions in the sense that uh, I remember when Satish Sharma was the yes, Indian yes, minister, yes, 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 yes. there was this case of distribution yes, of LPG yes, and uh, uh, yes, know, yes, gas yes. stations. Uh, later, uh, I think Sheila Call was allotting yes, yes. government houses uh, yes, yes, uh, you yes. know, in, in her own manner. Yes, yes. Now, it appears that you were basically against discretion or misuse of discretion. Had it only been the discretion, probably I would not have gone, taken the step which I took of asking both of them to pay compensation, 50 lakhs or 60 lakhs each of them. It, I would not have said it. But then, the discretion exercise mala fide. It was the mala fide which coming into their decision which made me 
And, and uh, intervene to that extent. Right. There's enough material on the record, and you give a finding that the minister acted malafide. Then I thought it was justifiable that I should ask the minister to compensate the government for the loss, which I assessed myself as 50 lakhs in one and 60 lakhs in the other. Though, of course, as you know, later on, another bench, higher bench, uh, went beyond his jurisdiction in imposing the fine. A fine or, I wouldn't call it a fine, be asking him to pay compensation. So they let them off. They let them off. But that's all right. That's okay. But I did it and I still feel that a, 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 a public servant, maybe a minister, who acts malafide in the performance of his duties, must, must be asked to compensate the government or whosoever... Uh, has, has occurred loss in, loss in that. After that, uh, when the bench uh, set aside my decision to, uh, uh, regarding this uh, compensation, the law commission came out saying that law should be made, that this is the correct judgment which, uh, which was given by Justice Kulip Singh. And moreover, the matter came before different benches. They were of the view, uh, tentatively of the view, though they didn't uh, delve on it, that this is permissible, it is being done all over. Just Kuldeep Singh, you are also known as a green judge. Environment yeah. was one of yeah, your uh, yeah, yeah. concerns. I remember, uh, you know, when you had stated that yeah, the well, polluter must pay, the industrialists, yeah, of course, are very uncomfortable well, with well, that. Well. And then uh, a tannery in Kolkata was asked to uh, move out, yeah, close course, down. Yes, yeah. You asked the high courts to set up uh, green benches. Yeah, of course. Now, all that was out of a sense of conviction. It was total sense of total conviction. Uh, Delhi was the third, second or the third most polluted city, most dirty city so far as the air, air uh, was concerned. Similarly, all our waters, we have 14 rivers, perennial rivers in the country, all 14 rivers were and still are, not only, not rivers, no water is not flowing in those rivers, it's the sewer which is flowing. Absolutely, so, but do you think, uh, you know, the, the same uh, degree is now being enforced with same commitment? I think there is commitment but it may not be the same it all is differs with an individual who is there but I still think that uh, uh, Supreme Court and other High Court judges on the whole are uh, dealing with the, um, this matter pollution control uh, more efficiently now they are doing Justice it. Justice Kuldeep Singh a lot of people feel that uh, this amounted to judicial activism and then that in the separation of powers this is in the domain of the executive. No, I don't agree with that when the government failed in the performance of its duties, then right to life is there. It's a fundamental so right. The courts must intervene. Court must come in. There is no way. Anybody who says, I say, he is not right. Absolutely. I won't agree with uh, Just Kuldeep Singh, you also dealt with the Mandal issue. Yes, but, Mandal. Uh, the, the reservation uh, issue yes, yes. continues uh, yes. unabated. Even now, the demands of all kinds are being yes, made. What is, is the, is, the is, end is, of this? You are very right. Mandal, I, no, no. Mandal, I was uh, dissenting. I was, we were, it was a nine judges bench, three, we were three who were dissented. I was one of the dissenters, main dissenter, my dissent was there because Mandal was primarily to, for the purposes of having court's approval on this OBC, right. or other backward classes. caste, caste or classes, caste, whatever, right. classes, other backward classes. Now the main question was, how to identify those classes? How yes, to identify? Yes. Now the majority held that caste was the main factor. I said nothing doing. Constitu constitution has buried the caste 50 fathom below in the earth. Right. How the hell you can now bring caste? Again back they are bringing in the census. There is a controversy in the census. Why caste? What is? If you read the constitution correctly, it says there should be no caste. Where is the caste? Those so reservations are only for a limited time. Limited. Reservation, I can, I can agree that so far as the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes are concerned, they, because of historical reason, for thousands of years, 